Good morning and welcome to our worship devotion for August the 9th of 2020 for Sycamore United Church of Christ. I pray that this message finds all of you well and safe and rejoicing in the Lord always. Our opening scripture comes from one Psalm 140, 105, number four, my apologies. Seek the Lord and his strength seek his presence continually. Our call to worship comes from 105 as well. Please follow together. We give you thanks, O Lord. We call on your name. We let others know of all that you have done. We sing to you, O God. We sing our praise. We tell of all your wonderful work in our world. May our hearts be filled with joy as we seek you and the strength that comes only from you. May we seek you always and forever, O Lord our God. Let us worship God together. Let us join together in prayer. Remind us, O Lord, when we come to worship you, we come just as we are full of flaws, full of complex emotions, and living with strained relationships. We know that you accept us and you accept our desire to be near you. Open our ears that we may hear you very acutely. Open our eyes that we can see you more directly. And open our hearts that we may know your acceptance of us. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Friends, over and over again in Scripture, God reminds us not to be afraid. As we draw near to God in confession, we do so not out of fear, but out of faith. In the one who promises to forgive. So let us confess our sin together. Reading. We reach for you, O God, as our faith falters and we realize that we have yet again forgotten to trust you. We ask you, we ask us not to fear, yet our minds and hearts are filled with fear and worry and what ifs. The winds of life make us weary, waves of struggle wash over us, and we fail to rely on you. We can't see your outstretched hand ready to pull us to safety. Forgive us, we pray, O God, and hear us now as we confess to you in silence of a way that we have found it hard to trust you. Friends, sometimes it can feel as if we are drowning, but Jesus extends a hand to us, a hand of forgiveness and grace, and pulls us to safety. Sisters and brothers in Christ, hear and proclaim the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. As we turn now to hearing the scriptures of the day, let us take a moment to center our thoughts in prayer. Holy God, we know that you give us your word as an illumination to our path. Help us to use it, to put it to work, so our path might be brightened, and that as the winds come up and the waves come over, that we do not lose our way. Encourage us always. Amen. Our first reading, I'm going to have us do a call and response. Uh, for those of you at home, I will be reading all the pieces as normal with a litany. So you can either just sit back and listen, or you can do the call and response as we will do in worship. And this is continuing our time in Romans, and then we're going to continue our time with Matthew, our second reading. 
The Apostle Paul has this to say about righteousness. There are two kinds of righteousness. Righteousness that comes from the law and the righteousness that comes from faith. Moses writes about the righteousness that comes from the law, saying, the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, don't say in your heart who will go up to heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will descend to the depths, that is, to bring Christ up for the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is on your lips. It is on, in your heart. That is the word of faith that we share with you. If you say with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. For it is through the heart that we believe and are saved. Scripture says no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and generously blesses all who call on the name of the Lord. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How can they call on the one they have not believed in? How can they hear without anyone proclaiming Christ to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, continuing our time in the Gospel. And this comes right after our scripture from last week, a feeding of the 5,000. Continuing with Matthew 14. Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking towards them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and started walking on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. And Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. If you remember from last week, Jesus was looking for some time to be alone. And after hearing the news of his cousin John the Baptist's death, still the crowds came and Jesus had mercy on them. We spent that time looking at the feeding of the 5,000. And in his miracle, we heard that the importance that we engage the miracle of God as well. Jesus did not just come and take over, but in order to make sure everyone was fed, the disciples had to be willing to share also. As such, we can see that we can help God to feed people and perform other wonderful works. This week, we have a continuation of that story. And Jesus is still looking for some time alone. So as the reading starts out, 
Jesus literally pushes his disciples onto a boat so he can, he can have a few moments of peace to grieve and to pray after dismissing the crowds. Then when it was time to rejoin the disciples, Jesus found that the boat had been pushed far out from the shore. No matter, Jesus would reach them wherever they were. Now the disciples first thought that Jesus was some sort of ghost floating above the water until Jesus identified himself. And Peter, always up for a challenge, asked if he could join Jesus upon the water. But when stepping out of the boat, Peter was scared by the wind and started to sink again. It was only Jesus reaching down and grabbing Peter up that kept him from going beneath the waves. It's an interesting story. Again, one that many of us first learn as children. But we're not children anymore. So what is there for us to learn here as adults? Is it simply another miracle pointing to the divinity of Jesus? No, no, I don't think so. How about a story poking at Peter for his doubt? No, I don't think it's that either, at least maybe not directly. Let's think about what we do know about Peter at this point. He's with the other disciples far out from shore. He's with the others when they first think Jesus is a ghost. He's the first one to jump up and ask if he can come out upon the water. Peter actually steps out of the boat. And he makes it a few steps. As long as he keeps his eyes on Jesus, Peter is all right. Peter actually appears to be the most courageous of all the disciples, reaching out to follow Christ wherever he is even in the middle of the water. So if we are called to be like any of the disciples, it's likely Peter, who is willing to at least try to follow Christ, unlike the other 11 who were likely watching from the safety of the boat. So no, I don't think we're poking fun at Peter here. But the problem seems to be is when Peter looks away from Jesus, and he's distracted by the force of the wind. It is at that point when he becomes frightened and begins to sink. It was in stepping out of the boat that Peter encountered the turbulence from the wind. It is from stepping out that he first runs into his opposition. And please, friends, notice that the wind is very real. The wind isn't part of Peter's imagination, and for that matter, his fear is also very real. Not that I've ever walked on water for that matter, but I have to imagine that it would be concerning, to say the least. Okay, so we have a very real Jesus, a very brave Peter, and some scary waves. What do we do with this? The situation reminds me of a time when Ariana was about five or so years old and learning how to swim. Now she has always liked the water and playing in pools, but up to this point she only wanted to play where it was safe, namely where her feet could touch bottom. The only way she would ever go any further into the pool was by hanging on to the side. Now we had a swimming class together and she was to push off from the side and to swim about a few feet or so to me. It took a while to convince her that it would be all right and in fact, Daddy would be waiting for her. Eventually, she mustered up enough courage, something she's never been in short supply of, and pushed off. And she promptly took in a mouthful of water. 
which I'm sure you can imagine, startled her, and she began to thrash about. And the more she thrashed, the slower she began to move, and just like Peter, she too began to sink, which also made the thrashing that much worse. But Daddy was only about a foot away and quickly caught her up and raised her above the water. I'm sure it must have been frightening. Like it is when all of us learn to swim. But she had to learn two things. First is to close your mouth. Very important lesson. But then the safety is in moving in water. It comes from keeping moving. And sure enough, in a few more tries, she mastered both lessons. And today she is a little fish when it comes to swimming. Here is an important part for all of us to hear. Namely, when we are getting out of the boat, or pushing off from the side of the pool, it's going to appear rough before it starts to get better. When letting go of our safety net, we need to start walking on the water. When you keep moving, or at least treading on the water. Just as Peter was there, just as, Pe sorry, just as Jesus was there for Peter, and I was there for my daughter, so too God is there for us. Trust me. We are never alone. God is there encouraging us to let go from the side of the pool, to step out from the boat, and to start to move into deeper waters. Now you might be wondering at your, to yourself, why? Why would God want us to be out in the water? Again, I'll take a lesson for my children. These days, Ariana is the fish out in water and she is encouraging her brother that it is safe and watching over him as he learns. So why does God encourage us to the waters? Well, part of the reason is because God wants us to grow up and to mature in our skills. For it is when we are powerful swimmers or water walkers that we can help our brothers and sisters for if we're ever going to be lifeguards, we have to first learn to swim. And as we are growing up, there will always be wind. There will be waves. There will be problems. The turbulence in our lives is not a sign of God's absence. The fact that there's a problem does not mean he's gone. But it's just rather the truth of the situation that sometimes things are messy. And that's okay. We will be okay. We can weather the turbulent times, for they are short-lived if we trust in God. We just need to remember that sometimes when we're getting out of the boat, it's going to be a little windy. And that's okay. We will be okay. Amen. Let us join together in prayer. Lord, we call upon your name, for you are the creator of all, the giver of life, and we stand before you in awe of your desire to know us and to hear our prayer. Lord, we come to your name in thanksgiving. Thank you for all the goodness that surrounds us, for our families with whom we belong and feel cherished, for friendships that nurture our soul and give us guidance and companionship, for work and for volunteer opportunities which provide a chance for us to make a difference. We give you thanks. We give you thanks also for all the new weddings of summer, all the anniversaries that mark years of faithful marriage, the joys of 
birthdays, whether first birthdays or 65th birthdays. We thank you for accomplishments that show hard work and dedication. We thank you, Lord, for all these reasons to be glad and to celebrate. And we call upon your name and hope as a church that we are becoming a community that you desire us to be. We pray that you would bless us and be with us as we journey forward. Help us to listen closely to your spirit as we discern our future to make the right choices. Thank you for those who serve you through this congregation, willing to do your work with a glad spirit. Lord, we call on your name and concern for those we know and love and those in our community who are sick and recovering from illnesses. Be with them and give them comfort and bring them swift and steady healing. We pray for those who grieve the loss of someone special to them. Stay near them as they mourn their loss and celebrate the life of one so dear. And Lord, we need to call on your name in peace, praying for your peace to descend upon our world and for your justice to reign throughout the earth. We ask that you bring for an end of violence and tragedy in our nation and in our world. Hear our prayers, all that we have shared aloud and all that remain in the privacy of our heart. O oh Lord, we call on your name and we pray to you in wonder that you hear us and you want to hear from us. In the name of Jesus, who taught us how to pray, saying together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, friends, I wish for you a peaceful week, but I know likely that you will have a week with some wind and some waves. As you face those waves, may you know that they are just temporary, but through them all, the Lord is reaching out his hand to you. May you know that no matter what you face, you are never alone. Go in peace, friends.